hello and welcome to 2024 happy new year i hope you had a lovely christmas and new year period today is the 2nd of january and i am back from norway and i would say i'm raring to go i'm not really i'm still quite tired i'll explain why later i'm actually still on holiday this week but i'm doing a little bit of work this morning just to catch up on a few things and film this video so you can go out on thursday and then i'll be back to work properly next week If you're new here, my name is Anakin. I design knitting patterns. I teach knitting workshops online and in person. And I sell yarn through my website, yarnaddict.co.uk. I'll link everything I'm talking about below this video, including links to my website, um, online courses, social media, all that kind of stuff. And if you like this video, I would love it if you'd give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing, subscribing, liking, commenting sharing this video helps youtube show me to more people so i really really appreciate that thank you very much for all your support in 2023 i really appreciate it if you remember how long you've been following me for or watching my youtube videos i'd love it if you drop a comment below to say how long you've been watching my youtube videos but if you don't remember that's fine um, I'd also like to know what you'd like to see from me this year. So last year I did a combination of tutorials, podcast episodes like this one, product reviews, talking about my magazine designs, um, what else? I do vlogs, I did Vlogtober and I did Vlogmas. There is knitting content basically so i'd like you to know i'd like to know what you'd like to see more of this year would you like it to be mainly this kind of video a podcast episode more tutorials if so anything in particular you'd like to see um, more product um reviews more project vlogs more general life vlogs um let me know what you'd like to see and i will see what i can do the weather in Cornwall has been particularly awful <laughs> since we came back. It's It was raining earlier. It's very, very windy and stormy today. The sun's just come out, so I just closed the curtain. Otherwise, it gets very bright in here because the sun comes in from the window on that side. Um, horrendous weather when we arrived on Sunday morning. Um, had a very turbulent flight from Norway. We left Norway. Our flight was like half past ten in the evening. In fact, I got a little bit of stuff I filmed at the airport, so I'll show you that now. So we were at uh, Oslo Airport, ready to fly home. Our plane's in just over two hours and it's the last plane of the day. There's only one plane before I was leaving and it's so quiet here. Everything is shut. It's all shut apart from the convenience um, store kiosk place. I'm going to go and see if I can have a quick look around duty free. One of the duty free shops is open but there's nobody here. Our flight is full. There's only one flight before our flight um, in about half an hour, I think, and then an hour and a half to wait for our flight. So, a little bit boring, but I got my knitting and I'm just having a wander around the airport for landing just before midnight. And then we've got to drive back to Cornwall.
So our flight was about half past ten in the evening, just after half past ten, it was a little bit late. So we landed about midnight at London Stansted Airport, north of London, got our car, drove home, we got home at half past seven in the morning. We switched driving several times, more frequently towards the end. Um, in fact, we had to stop about 10, 15 minutes before we got home because I was just feeling so tired, I was like struggling to keep my eyes open. And we had to stop at a petrol station to get some bread anyway, so we switched driving. Normally I would have just pushed on and got home, but I was so tired and I didn't trust myself. So we switched driving again. Um, but when we landed, we had a really turbulent flight and a really sort of shaky, turbulent landing. And when we got outside the sunset to wait for the bus to the car park, we were in last while because there was a really strong storm blowing. Um, but we got home, we had to stop for an hour and sleep in the car. And then Simon slept a little bit when I was driving and then nodded off a bit when he was driving. So we got home, um, went to bed, did nothing on New Year's Eve. We went to bed for a few hours, got up, sat knitting, scrolling on my phone and watching telly for the rest of the day. Went to bed about 10 o'clock in the evening. Luckily there weren't too many fireworks around here, so I slept through. And then yesterday it was horrendous weather outside, so we basically just chilled, knitted, scrolled on my phone, watched telly, had a nap in the middle of the day. Didn't sleep very well last night, so I'm more tired today than I thought I would be. Done a little bit of work this morning and I had another phone appointment with spec service about my contact lenses. I've got an appointment booked in about 10 days time to try my fourth pair of contact lenses. The fourth pair aren't right then I'm giving up. These are fine except I can't see my laptop. Everything on my laptop is really blurry. So we're gonna give it a fourth pair go and then if they don't work I'm giving up. But I've tried multifocal where the first multifocal, the distance was okay, but up close was not. Um, second multifocal, up close was fine, but distance was awful. Like, I I wasn't safe to drive, basically. Um, and now I've tried one distance in one eye, and uh, so I think it's, like, long distance in one eye, and a sh short, like a, not reading prescription, but like a, just a very slight distance in this eye. And it's fine for everything. Reading up close is fine. Distance is fine. Medium distance, like an arm's length, which is where my laptop screen is when I sit at my desk and work. Awful. Really blurry. So, we'll see how we get on. I might be back to wearing glasses soon <laughs> at this point. Anyway, let's get on with some knitting chat. Um, I'm going to share what I've been knitting lately. I've got a couple of finished things. I got some yarn. I did buy some yarn in Norway eventually on the last day. Um, and what I'm knitting for the next week or so. But first, I have got a special offer that I'd like to share with you first because I know I'll forget otherwise. I'm going to just grab my notebook to make sure I remember the details because I changed them a couple of times because I made some mistakes this morning. Um, okay, so... 15% off my successful lace knitting course, my online successful lace knitting course. You can get 15% off until the 12th of January 2024 uh, with the code 15% off. So it's 15, the percentage sign off. I'll put the code on the screen and also below this video with the link to the course below this video as well. You can also get 15% off any orders from my website, yarnaddict.co.uk, with the same code 15, the percentage sign off, all one word, I'll put it on the screen and below, um, until the 20th of January. So I'll put all those details below this video. They'll also be in my newsletter this week. So if you're not signed up to my newsletter, make sure you do. I'm also going through my online courses uh, because I realised that I can actually set them so that you can gift it to somebody because I had somebody before Christmas wanting to give uh, my brush course I think it was as a gift to a friend and we had to kind of do it manually but I realized you can actually do it automatically which is really cool so at the moment you can give my successful brush and my su successful lace knitting as a gift I'm going to try and work through the rest of them over the next week and or two so that eventually you can give them all as gifts. But at the moment, successful brush and successful lace knitting can be given as a gift. Um, and I've also got payment options on those two courses. So you can pay in either US dollars or, US, or UK pounds. Um, before it was just US dollars. And I'm 
gradually changing all the other courses so they'll all be consistent but it's going to take me some time <laughs> to do that um so this offers 15 percent off my website and 15 percent off successful lace knitting um i'll put all the details for that below Did you watch my video from Norway last week? So I posted a vlog last week, but I also talked about what I've been knitting in Norway. Um, I also posted a couple of Vlogmas videos before Christmas from Norway. I'm just briefly going to show you what I finished in Norway, because if you watched last week, you will have seen it. So I'm not going to talk about it very much, but I'm just going to be very, very brief. So I knitted, I designed these twist hand warmers, which are free with my um, successful brioche online course and with my brush improvers uh, workshop yeah brush improvers workshop in-person workshop is what i was going to say i designed these hand warmers a year ago beginning of last year i think but i knitted them up in um what's the yarn called it's a new new symphony hand dyed yarn from nip pro and it's the viva which is 100 percent superwash merino I am going to do a review on the yarn um, in a week or two. I also got the Nipro uh, Luna, Nipro, Nipro Symphony Luna, which is merino and silk. And I want to try that as well before I do a review. So I think I might try that. And I also got the sock yarn. I might try all of them before I do a review. Um, but I will do a review on it. First impressions of the Viva was it's okay. I don't love it, but I want to do a review of all three yarns before I make my, my mind. Um, but I knitted this twist cow as well in the same, it's the same pattern as for the twist hand warmers. But I made it into a cowl as well. Um, and I wore that a lot in Norway for the last few days. It was quite cold in Norway. It went from my, like minus one, minus two to minus ten on different days. We had quite a lot of snow, more snow than we've had for a long time. So really happy with those. I need to write up the pattern for the cow. The hand warmers, as I said, are only available from my successful brioche online course and my in-person workshops for the brioche improvers workshops. I don't know about the cow, but they just make that available through the online course as well i went to publish the pattern i haven't decided yet i need to write up the pattern and get it edited and all that stuff first before i make up my mind about it 
I have another thing that I actually finished before we left. Well, I nearly finished it before we left. But I had one thing to finish. Uh, all the knitting was done. But I didn't have time to finish the last bit before I left or take pictures of it because it was dark. So I finished that on New Year's Eve. And that is my Yarn Unique Advent Blanket. So if you're following me during Vlogmas, you will know that I got a Yarn Advent from Yarn Unique. I'll link them below. And I got a Neon DK Advent. And it was definitely neon. <laughs> I must admit while I was opening it, I was a little bit, I'm not sure I loved it, but I like some, I really like some of the colours, I didn't like some of the colours. Um, it's difficult to know what to expect with a neon advent, to be quite honest, but I wanted the DK one, and I'd already decided before it arrived that I would knit my poinsettia blanket. So the original poinsettia blanket is this one, which I knitted in last year's um botanical yarns advent and it was sock yarn i originally knitted it in so i wanted to see how i knitted up in a dk which is kind of why i got this dk advent because i ordered it fairly late as in like probably september maybe august september time um i would definitely get an advent from yarn unique again um her main advent i think is called what's called frosted berries and i've been watching her sharing it on social media and i kind of wish i'd gotten that one because that was beautiful and i probably would have enjoyed that one more than the neon one but i decided i was going to knit up this neon one the poinsettia blankets is knitted in individual squares so i knitted them blocked them the pattern is written for the sock yarn but it includes those so i had to modify it for the dk yarn and you can make it any size you want. The DK yarn actually ended up slightly smaller than the um, sock yarn. So I finished all the squares before we went to Norway, but the final square wasn't dry, so I couldn't actually um, attach it. The final square is that blue one. So I did that when we came home. It was all lying next to my knitting chair, ready to be attached when we got home. I have actually got a video that I filmed laid this out on my bed the other day and i filmed and i'm going to insert that here so you can see exactly what it looks like this is my yarn unique advent 2023 blanket i use my poinsettia pattern now i designed poinsettia to work with like more solid semi-solid colors i don't think it works as well with this yarn but i had decided i was going to do it so i committed but we start over there Day 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 21, 22, 23, 24. Yes, I would have preferred this if it had been more um, solid, semi-solid colorways, or maybe sort of just light, light speckly, or the variegation a bit more tone-on-tone -tone kind of variegation in each colorway, but... I'm happy I did this. I'm not sure what else I would have used this yarn for if I hadn't done it this way. So I'm happy I did it. But it is big enough for me to have it over my legs when I'm sitting in my chair knitting. I did that yesterday. Dog was snuggled under it and on top of it at various times and he liked it. So I did. I have used it already and I do like it. I like the colours better as a whole. I must admit when I was opening it there were some colourways like these oranges that I was a little bit not very keen on. Um, I like the greens, I like the yellows, I like the pinks, I like the purples, the blues are okay. did not like the oranges but when you order a neon uh, advent you don't know what you're going to get. Uh, if they'd all been pink and purple that would have been perfect but I'm happy with it. I think it looks better as a whole than it did individually. Um, and I'm glad I made this because at least that's that advent calendar made up and not making me feel guilty in 2024. So let's talk about what I'm knitting at the moment. Um, I started a um, sweater in Norway. So my pink um, alpaca silk sweater, which you've seen if you've been watching me for a while. Um, I'm knitting it in another yarn. So the yarn is Rema alpaca silk which is alpaca silk and a tiny bit of merino it's a lace weight yarn and it's fluffy but not too fluffy and i'm knitting it in this really lovely smoky lilac color when i looked into knitting it in another color i really wanted like a bright purple like a violet purple um 
but I didn't have that or any other bright colours that I liked. So I went for this one. I nearly went for like a charcoal grey and I may still do it in a charcoal grey because I love my red, my pink, sorry, sweater. I absolutely love it and I've worn it so much so far this winter. So I like to finish this relatively quickly so I can wear it this winter and then maybe for next winter I'll knit a grey one um, unless they come out in other colours. Knitting things in mohair and like really fluffy alpaca and stuff has been really popular for the last few years but most of them are too fluffy for me. I just end up with my clothes covered in fluff and the um, Daima alpaca silk is fluffy but not too fluffy. It's got a lot less fluff than some of the other yarns out there. So I really like it. It is um, lace weight yarn so it has the equivalent of 800 meters per 100 grams and I managed to finish, I'm knitting it top down I managed to finish the back and the two fronts and join it at the underarm before I left and then I've knitted from there so I managed to join it when did we leave Saturday so I managed to join it like Saturday afternoon I think I just joined it really when we were getting ready to leave for the airport um so I knitted that since Saturday evening which is not a lot but I do have 300 stitches um but that's my priority, kind of, over the next couple of weeks. I would love to finish it in the next couple of weeks. I think it took me like three weeks to knit the first one. Two weeks of those was in Norway. And then week, maybe a week and a half after I came back from Norway. Um, I'd like to finish this fairly quickly because I really, really like it. But I do also have a deadline project I need to be getting on with, which is due two weeks from yesterday I think it's a small project I've written up the pattern this morning and the I ran the yarn before we went to Norway so that's all ready to go so I can cast on and I bought brought even brought my project bag <laughs> upstairs this morning I'm going to use my uh, color clutch bag I put my needles in there I'm using the lantern moon um new needles I got before Christmas I'll also do a review on these um I knitted the this cowl and the hand warmers with it and I really like it, but there are a couple of things I'm not 100% sure about. So I'm going to use it again on this project and I'm going to do a review on those needles in a week or two. This shouldn't take me too long. I'm hoping, depending on how often I knit on this and how much I knit on that sweater, I'm hoping I can finish this like earlier next week. But it shouldn't take me that long to finish because it's a fairly small accessory without saying too much. So those are my main projects that I'm going to be working on. I, the reason I haven't done as much on my sweater since we came home is because I have been working on my crochet blanket. So before Christmas, I think I decided this crochet blanket was done. I would just do an edging. But I was showing it to my daughter yesterday because one of my daughter's crochets. And I held it up against another crochet blanket I made a couple of years ago. Um, I think I made it, finished it about a year ago. And this one's still a little bit shorter, so I'm going to make it probably about that much longer. I've got the I tend to move the marker up every time I film. The marker is there. I don't. I think I've talked about it since. I don't think I've done all this since last time I talked about this on the podcast. But um, I have done quite a lot. So since we came home, I've done. I think I was on that purple stripe. So I do three rows in each color, and I think I was on that purple one since we came home. So I've added. Uh, one two three four so each stripe is three rows of granny trebles so i've added one two three four four times three twelve rows um since we came home so i've done a fair bit on that i am i've just started another color i'm holding i'm using leftover sock yarn i'm holding these two together Sometimes I've been holding two together of the same colour. Sometimes I've been holding two different colours together. So like that one, I think I used that one with a different colour here. And now I'm using it oh, with that one here. So I'm plugging away on that. Uh, I'd like to finish it, but it probably won't get that much 
action over the next week or two because I have that deadline project I need to finish. So I'm going to just put that back in the basket next to me. I have this big jelly basket that I got from it's called Stitch Cheltenham, I think, um, when they opened. And I just put the project in there plus my leftover sock yarn in there. And then each time I need a new colour, I just rummage in there to see what's available. Um, I've also been keeping my other projects in there because I tied it up before Christmas. We had a really big clear out and deep clean in the lounge. And I moved, pulled all my knitting stuff out. And I had all my knitting stuff in like a wicker basket or straw basket or something. But it was all collapsing a bit. And I got rid of that. And I've decided I'm going to use this plastic one instead. Once I finish the blanket, all my like project bags of current projects will just live in there, I think. The other project I started working on before Christmas was my Pixie yarns. I think it's going to be a cardigan. I haven't 100% decided yet. I, how far did I get? I've done, I have one skein of this colour. I have three different mini set skeins and I have one other colour. I'm not going to go into detail about it now because I probably won't be working on it for the next um, few next week. It'll be on hold at least till I finish the um, small project for my deadline. Possibly till I finish this, my sweater. I'm not quite sure yet. But I've knitted the back and I'm knitting the one front um, top down again. I'm basically going to try and finish up this colour and then decide what to do next. Um, so that's also a project I need to get back to. I want to finish my alpaca silk sweater first um, and the design I'm doing for this magazine. They my priority projects. This is probably going to be more of something. I mean, I could wear it in the winter, but I think it'd be really good for like spring. So I think I'm going to finish my deadline project and my sweater, try and finish those first and then crack on with that one. I also have my advent yarn. Um, I have last year's from Orchidine Luxury Yarns, not last year's, 2022 from Orchidine Luxury Yarn, which I know what I want to make, but I haven't started yet. But I want to start on that soonish. And then I have one from Truly Hooked, which I did show off, I think, in a Vlogmas video. Let me see if I can get it out again, in case you didn't watch Vlogmas. Um, So it's basically this one. So I love those colours. I have ideas what to do with it. I had decided and then last night I got another idea. So I'm hoping to start. I'd like to knit up both of those advents that I've got remaining before I commit to an advent for 2024. And I'm not buying an advent. I've seen some already. I'm not signing up for an advent till late spring early summer unless i see one that i desperately like um and from an indie dyer i really really trust if you sign up for an advent now and especially if you pay it all up front you probably won't be covered by your credit card debit card or paypal if in december that advent doesn't turn up um i think most cards and paypal have six month protection so if it doesn't turn up in six months you can try and claim your money back um some may be longer than that i don't know check your individual <laughs> cards but i've been told paypal is six months but i haven't actually checked that myself but this year i made sure both of the ones i ordered were within that six month window i also paid in installments um and they were both indie dice i trust so just keep an eye out for that it's difficult financial times at the moment if people are I can understand people putting up their advents early so they can work on them earlier. A lot of people work on them during the summer because that's probably a quieter time. But you also got to remember the fact that it's a difficult time um, financially for a lot of businesses. And if that business goes bust before they ship your advent, they've got your money. You're not going to get it back. So just be careful and don't commit yourself too early unless you can pay in installments and you just have to pay a deposit. So I don't know which ones I'm going to get <clears throat> for 2024. I have a video. I have a video I posted in end of November, early December 
last in 2023 and one I posted at the beginning of 2023 talking about Advents. I'll link those below as well. Um, but I don't know what I'm going to do. I will get an Advent this year, definitely, but I don't know which company so far. I've got different Advents. I haven't gone for the same company twice. And I might do something else next year. We'll see when all the like the um listings come out and the um inspiration photos and the themes and all that kind of stuff comes out one advent i've seen this year that i really really liked was uh, the little gray girl i followed somebody on youtube who got an advent from her and i really liked it and i also follow her on instagram and she was selling some of some of her spare advents between christmas and new year and i was very very tempted but i managed to resist but if she does an advent again this year she'll definitely be one i will consider because i really like hers for this year Having said that, another one I really liked last year in 2022, I didn't like their 2023 advent, so, but advents are a surprise, so, you know, you're not going to know what they look like till they arrive, really. Okay, let's look at what I purchased in Norway. So, I shared in the last video I got that I'd been to two yarn shops in Oslo. First one, I didn't buy anything out. Second one, I bought this, which are like barbecue tubes to put in the needles and slide your stitches onto them i have these i had two packs of these i've purchased previously previously um but they're thinner these are for bigger needles and needle size five to ten millimeter which i don't use very often but when i saw these and they're fairly cheap um trying to work out how much they were in 65 norwegian kroner so probably about four pounds maybe i don't know but i thought they'd be useful to have I also got two little, which I don't know whether I think they're downstairs, two little wooden rule, 10 centimeter ruler things to make it easier to measure my tension. Talk more about that in last week's Norway vlog video. But I did go to, I hadn't bought any yarn as of last week. And then on Friday, yeah, Friday, I popped down to the local shopping center and popped into the yarn shop called, uh, where my parents live, yarn shop called Garn Lycke, um, which is a really lovely yarn shop. There are two yarn shops where my parents live, and that one is the one that's in the shopping centre, and it's the nicest one, I think. The other one, I think, might be slightly bigger, but I find the one in the shopping centre friendlier. So I'll link them below, just in case you happen to be in Norway. It's in a town called Vesby, south of Oslo. Um, unless you know people who live there, you're probably not likely to visit, because it's not that exciting. But I got two lots of sock yarn. Um, we went in to have a look, Simon came with me, and I was looking around, there's a lot of stuff I could have bought, but I didn't really have, I've got a few projects I want to do over the next few months, and there wasn't anything I was like desperate to try yarn by, so I haven't tried before, but I do, did want some thicker sock yarn to make some DK socks, so this is from Thalagan, which is Norwegian Yarn Company, and it's warm sock yarn, wool nylon, and it has 260 meters per 100 grams. So I must admit, a lot of other sock yarns are a bit thicker. Uh, I don't think it's quite DK. It's probably between a DK and a four ply. Other yarns that ha are thicker tend to be 150 grams. Uh, this is only 100 grams, so 260 meters. I've done socks in that amount of yarn before. So I'll probably do them toe up because then I will know whether how far up the leg I can go and not run out of yarn. So I got that colour for me because those colours are really pretty. And then Simon said he fancied a pair of thick socks and I said, well, choose a colour. So he went for this colour. The same yarn, same thickness, that colour. So I'll probably cast on his first because he hasn't had any socks for a while. I did knit him one pair of socks last year. I did write down how much I knitted last year, all my projects, but I might do that in a separate video. Um, I think I did maybe eight pairs of socks, but I can't remember. One pair for him, all the rest were for me. So I think my next pair of socks will be these. I'll probably cast on in the next week or so, so I have a project to take out and about with me, because I think it will be a perfect small project to take out and about when we go for days out and things like that. So that's my plan with those. <music>
Okay, so I think that's it. I think I have had another pattern published in a magazine, but the magazine haven't put any photos on Ravelry yet and I haven't received a copy of it yet, so I don't know. <laughs> I haven't seen it yet. I need to double check to see whether it's actually come out or not. But according to my diary, it was due out last week. Um, it's, I think it's simply anything, but I need to double check whether that's come out. So I'll probably talk about that next week. Last week, I had a video out uh, on Tuesday where I showed, I haven't got the sweater here. But it was the sweater I designed for Knitting Magazine, the last issue of Knitting Magazine, and it was a steeped sweater. So I showed you how I steeped it, which is cutting the arm uh, hole for the armhole. So I showed you how I did that. And then I also did a Norway Vlogs video last week. So if you've missed those, I hope you'd like to go back and watch them. If you missed Vlogmas, new fans have seen that. We did a lot of days out National Trust properties, mainly in Cornwall. And while I was knitting, opening my advents, that kind of thing. So if you were too busy to watch them in December, you can go and watch them now. I have a playlist for 2023, 2022 and 2021. Um, let me see if there's anything else I need to mention. I do have some workshops coming up, but I will talk about those next week because I haven't made a list yet. And I'm not, not that organised this week. Basically, we're on holiday this week. The girls are home this week we're on holiday um so i'm just sneaking up to do a bit of work every now and then just to keep things ticking over for the because the next two weeks are going to be really busy i got workshop next week and the week after so i want to just do a few things to catch up there was no tuesday video this week because it's tuesday day and i'm filming this i hadn't filmed i was trying to film some before we went to norway that i could post today but i didn't get time for it i have quite a few video ideas now and i'd like to try and film a couple this week but they're supposed to be awful this week, so I don't know how much out and about we'll be doing. I think we'd hope we could go out with the girls and things like that. But weather is pretty awful this week, so we'll see what happens. Um, if it gets better or not. Tomorrow we're going to have a Christmas dinner with the girls. Because the girls didn't go to Norway with us. So we're going to have Christmas dinner with the girls and my father-in-law. We're going to cook a proper Christmas roast dinner. We don't do turkey. Probably do beef, I think. We need to go shopping tonight all the stuff for it so as far as it's as far as the yarn addict household is concerned christmas is still going on anyway don't forget you can get 15 percent off my successful lace knitting course 50 percent off any orders in my online shop i'll pop all the details below make sure you sign up to my newsletter so you don't miss out on any future offers i hope you enjoyed today's video if you liked it please give it a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed yet please consider subscribing Please leave me a comment, tell me what you'd like to see in terms of videos this week. And thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Have